Hey guys, this is Gavin from Health and Performance and we have Billy Frost again with us today. Welcome to part four of how to deal or how to address upper arm bicep pain after squatting. So today in part four, we're just gonna show you some of the training considerations that are available if you have this problem. In parts one, we showed you how to alleviate some of the acute symptoms. In part two, we showed you how to set up uh, correctly and really ensure that you're taking that load in the back and not the arms. In part three, we went through uh, some self tests you can do if you can't get into the correct position, uh, some corrections for that. And today in part four, we're just gonna show you some of the training considerations that are available if you have this problem. So when we think about what's happening at the elbow in the, uh, in the squat, even if we got good setup, even if we got great mobility and great positioning, etc., etc. When we get to a certain load, we're gonna have a lot of strain through the, uh, through the elbow, primarily really through the brachialis and potentially through the, the uh, radio brachialis. So in part one of this series, I showed you how um, not all elbow flexion exercises are equal. So when we think of the bicep, the bicep's gonna help uh, the supination of the hand, so taking yourself into a palm up position. So we're getting a lot more sort of bicep recruitment through here. When we turn the hand into this neutral position and even more so when we go into a prone position, we're really sort of taking a lot of the biceps out of this and utilizing that brachialis which sits kind of between the bicep and the tricep and acts as a single joint uh, flexor of the elbow, whereas the biceps flex the elbow and the shoulder here, yeah? So some of the issue may be, if you've gone through positioning, you've gone through mobility, etc., etc. some of the issue may be that we need to improve uh, tissue tolerance in the brachialis and then also in through here through the radiobrachialis. So some options uh, we've got for you today, Bill is gonna demonstrate now. We can use, uh, utilize the hammer curl as part of your accessory movements. So you see Bill is taking a neutral grip, the palms are facing, and this really does accentuate more the brachialis and that radiobrachialis that we're trying to hit. Um, from here, we can go into a reverse curl. So we can utilize uh, dumbbells for this. That's great. We can utilize uh, an easy bar, even a straight bar. Some people struggle with the rotation through the elbow, the pronation of the elbow to, to get onto a straight bar. You might find that easy bar just a lot uh, better for you, a little more comfortable. Thanks, Billy. So incorporating some of these elbow flexion exercises into your accessory uh, accessory lifts, accessory exercises in your program with particular attention to how you're executing and what's going on there rather than just thinking, I'm just gonna train biceps into a regular bicep curl, which is absolutely fine, but you would definitely benefit from bringing these in because when we think about the position of the uh, elbow in the squat, the palms are forward, which is actually putting us in that neutral position, yep. So we need to strengthen the positions that are gonna be loaded and that we're gonna be in. So it just makes sense to strengthen that position to here at the elbow to deal with the extra load when the weight starts getting heavy, regardless of how well you're using your back or not. Now in part three, when we're looking at uh, shoulder mobility, more specifically this concept of extension at the shoulder, um, we went through some stretches and some things you can do to address that. Something else you can really uh, do in your accessories you're gonna help this in terms of, of bicep training is actually just regular bicep training. However, going to an inclined bicep curl is gonna be exceptionally useful because what we're doing here, we're training behind the midline, which means the, the shoulder is actually moving into extension. So um, literally just spending more time in this position um, it's going to make it a lot easier to get to that position. Again, you become, it becomes easier to get into the position as you spend more time in. So Billy's going to go to do an inclined curl here. Now, this is looking great. We want to make sure we're keeping that humerus pretty much straight up and down, so perpendicular to the floor. And we do that by keeping the elbows back. So as we curl, some, sometimes we might cue someone to curl the weight up and think about pushing their elbows back. You don't necessarily need to push them back, but sometimes you might use that cue if you find your elbows coming forward. <clears throat> now I want to keep the elbow uh, back because if we do come forward, I'll get belly to a couple of reps, if we curl and come forward through here, we're not really staying in that position of shoulder extension, which is what the, uh, the point of this exercise is for as it pertains to tissue tolerance in squatting. Okay, so again, you definitely include these as part of your accessory work. So just some ideas and some options there you can use for, to increase uh, tissue tolerance in the, the uh, elbow flexors. But what about the actual squat? We're just gonna head over to Monolift now, so join us there, and we'll run through some options that we have for you there. So a couple of options uh, you can use to, just to maintain squatting. 
um, are the safety bar and the bow bar we'll come to in a moment. Uh, it's the safety squat bar, most of you are going to be familiar with this and use it uh, anyway. Now, when we think of specificity, if you're getting these kind of upper arm bicep problems in the squat, uh, in the second half of prep, uh, especially in the peaking phase close to competition, you probably don't want to be using this because it's not going to be particularly specific to having a straight bar on your back in comp. Now, if this is the only option you have, then it's the only option you have, but um, definitely recommend using this either at the very beginning of, of a prep or even through the off season. Okay, this would be a great option. Um, like I said, because it isn't a straight bar, because it does change the squat noticeably, um, you're not going to get that specificity that you're really looking for uh, on competition day. Okay, uh, Billy's just going to hop under and just work through uh, a couple of reps for us. She's going to take that out. So obviously you can see why this is going to be a useful option if you do have that upper arm pain, because it just takes away all the shoulder and arm mobility requirements and all the uh, loading through the arms and the shoulders also. Okay, cool. Just take that in. Excellent. Right cool. So that's the safety bar squat. Like I said, beginning of a prep, uh, off season, probably going to be okay. If you're halfway through a prep, say, or, or close to comp day, uh, we're going to take you up to the other uh, monolift and show you the bow bar. So another option we have is uh, the bow bar, of course. So the reason we might want to use the bow bar over the safety squat bar is if we're closer to competition or for some reason we want to maintain specificity uh, even outside of a competition prep period. So of course it isn't a straight bar but it takes us into a very similar position that the straight bar would. With the camber we've got down here it's just a lot easier to, to uh, hold on to the bar, puts a lot less load, still we've got to have proper setup, but puts a lot less load and also um, has a lot less mobility requirements through the shoulder and tends to load the shoulder um, upper arm and, and elbow less anyway. So uh, if you're at a point where you just literally just cannot squat with a straight bar because the pain is too much or it just impacts all your other lifts and, and accessory movements too much, um, this can be an option for you. Again, it's not completely specific, but it's pretty damn close. So we're gonna get Billy under here. I'll get Billy just to set up first. So everything else stays the same. We're gonna go in head first. We're gonna pinch those shoulder blades together. We're gonna to go into scapular depression, depression. And we're gonna try and recruit the lats through here. Pick that chest up, collarbone back towards the bar. Good. And you can see, obviously how here with Billy, she's got her hands sitting a little bit further in front compared to a straight bar and a lot lower down. So the mobility requirements are, are known to be less. Straight through, I'm just gonna go for a second rep. So everything else that you would normally do in a squat is gonna be uh, really the same on this. Okay, let's take it in. Great, thanks Billy. Just to round everything up then, how do we put this into practice? How do we actually utilize this? So just some very broad scale recommendations here. If you're in, the, uh, if you're in a prep and you start getting this pain early on, one, make sure you're setting up correctly with the back. Make sure you're taking as much load of the bar in the squat in the back as possible so you're loading the arms a lot less. Number two, if you struggle with that, have a look through uh, part three and see which component of the mobility requirements you're not meeting and how to address that. And then um, start incorporating some of the accessories work we showed you for the elbow flexors. Then decide, okay, I'm quite a way out from prep uh, or prep or comp, I'll use a uh, safety bar or actually I'm a bit closer in so what I'm going to do is just use the bow bar or it may be that you are really close, only two, three weeks out and you just can't, uh, can't squat without pain. You can just use the, uh, the ideas and, and concepts we showed you in part one just to alleviate the acute symptoms, stay with the straight bar, and just get through the pain, do what you need to do, finish competition and then after comp as part of your off season or prehab or whatever you want, guys want to call it out there, what you can do then is start looking at, okay, let's address the mobility, let's address tissue tolerance and all the other components we've, we've addressed today. So just some, some ideas then of how to put all this information together and actually use it to uh, get the solution that it can definitely offer you. So that concludes part four. Thank you, Billy. It's been an excellent demo model. Um, please comment, like, subscribe, give me your thoughts, give me your feedbacks. 
and look out because we are going to make this whole four part series available on one complete download that you can keep forever it's going to be absolutely free so keep an eye out for that and um, yeah come back to our channel my channel and pages more often because we're going to be addressing a lot more of these kind of problems that powerlifters strength sport athletes um, general gym goers who are serious about the training phase